Entitled Karen tries to steal my baby before it's even born. My sister has been struggling with infertility for a long time. When I happily announced my pregnancy, she decided that my happiness was unfair to her. She demanded that I give her the baby. I said no, so she started stealing our child's belongings. She's also trying to talk our family into convincing me to give up the baby. That was all bad enough, but then things started to get crazy. I'm currently 19 weeks pregnant. My partner and I are very excited, as this is our first baby, and we've been trying for a few months. We announced the pregnancy a month ago at a dinner party we hosted, and everyone seemed surprised and overjoyed. My sister, who I'll call Karen, immediately burst into tears and asked me how I could do this to her. I stared at her and asked, What? She started ranting, saying that I always got everything I wanted, which is not true. I worked hard for all that I have and she said that she knew I got pregnant just so I could rub her infertility in her face. She screamed at me for five minutes about how I didn't deserve to be a mother, and she should be the one pregnant right now. My parents left with her soon after, and the party was basically over. I was really disturbed by my sister's reaction because we had been pretty close before, and she had never done anything like this. Karen called me the next day, apologizing for how she acted at my announcement, and asked if we could meet up for coffee. I accepted. We met up, and she pretended as though nothing had happened. Then she started a big speech about her infertility, how heartbreaking it is to be growing life inside of her just to lose it, and how she had always wanted children of her own. She then proceeded to ask me if I could consider getting an abortion to make things fair, or let her adopt my baby. I stared at her and asked if she was serious. Karen said she was. I just dropped my part of the bill on the table and left. Her husband Larry texted me a rant that night about how I'd made Karen cry and how all they wanted was to be parents and that this meant so much to them. He said I owed them for being more successful than them. I and my partner invested many years into our jobs and we have worked very hard to earn what we earn now. I told them that my partner and I have been hoping for kids too and that I was not giving up my baby. He hung up. She later sent me a long letter, four pages about how she had always wanted to be a mother, and could I consider either abortion or letting her adopt my baby. She told me how I should care about my older sister's happiness, how she would make a better mom, how the oldest kid should have the first grandchild, and how I could always just have another baby since it was so easy for me to conceive. After that, she quieted down some, and I thought we were done with this. Except we weren't. She had posted my sonogram on her Facebook and captioned it, Larry and I are expecting. We can't wait to meet our little princess. I was seeing red. I texted her and demanded she take the post down. No reply. I texted Larry. No reply. So I called my mother and told her what happened. She was able to make Karen take the post down, luckily enough. Karen has called me petty for calling my mom and has continued to demand I give up my baby. I sent her a letter explaining that I'd had enough of her nonsense, that I am keeping my baby, and that I recommend she get some help. I added that if she continues, I will not hesitate to call 999. This weekend, however, was the absolute last straw. My mom and dad have the spare key to my house, and while she was over at their house for brunch, she took the key. While my partner and I were at work, she broke into our house and stole all the clothing, blankets, nappies, bottles, and pretty much any other item we had bought for the baby, except furniture. It was later returned after my mom found it in her car. I called 999, but they told me I couldn't do anything because I had no proof, and because it was all returned. My partner and I are moving in April, but I'm still scared my sister will find out where we live and take my child. I get that she's upset and jealous due to her infertility, but that shouldn't mean I have to give up my baby. My parents know about this, and they've been doing their best to get her some help. She doesn't want to adopt because she wants a child that's her own flesh and blood. I'm due later this year, and the stress she's causing cannot and will not be good for me or the baby. My partner is looking into a cease and desist letter. Is there anything else I should do or say? I'm scared for my baby. Update. We've had the locks changed, cameras installed, and a ring doorbell put in. I've started saving every letter and screenshotting every message my sister has sent and plan to take them to court for a restraining order very soon. We have also been seriously documenting everything. My husband and I are planning a trip to Ireland for our anniversary next week, and it's going to be good to clear our heads from my sister. I've called 999 to report her for harassment, and they gave her a warning. 
She's contacted me saying that if I won't give her my child, I can at least pay for multiple rounds of in vitro, which I've not replied to other than refusing. She's been begging my parents to convince me to give up my baby, which they refuse to do. They have also been given a statement that basically says that if they give her my contact information, they will not see my baby, to which they've agreed. I've since changed my phone number, and we're moving very soon. My sister does not know our new address. She actually stood on our stoop for 20 minutes a few days ago, banging on our door and yelling. My husband opened a window and told her that if she didn't leave, he would let the dog out and threatened to call the police. We have a rather small but hyper puppy who jumps on everyone and barks a lot, and Karen is actually quite scared of dogs, so this made her leave. I started working from home last week, as did my husband, and we followed the advice to wash all of the baby stuff, as well as made sure none of the food in our kitchen was messed with. None was, luckily. We're planning on getting a restraining order as soon as possible, and are looking forward to our trip. I'm already sick of being pregnant, and I'm not even in the third trimester. I just want my baby. Is your sister David Bowie in Labyrinth? Because this is just over the top. This is probably the third infertility story we've covered in less than a week, and I'm struggling to believe there are really this many unhinged baby-snatching psychopaths out there. I kind of thought infertile women were just normal people trying to navigate their futures in the midst of a devastating medical condition. I couldn't have possibly had that wrong. The most terrifying part of this is that commenters on another subreddit, which cross-posts stories they believe to be fake, saw nothing false about how useless the police were in this story. Granted, one of them says that's because OP called the wrong number. A bit of research seems to back up that she should have been calling 101, not 999. But maybe some of our viewers know more about that. This OP also doesn't seem to know what a cease and desist letter is. But that doesn't mean she didn't try to write one anyway. What do you think? Can you imagine this story ringing true? If you have any similar stories to share, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Cheating husband wants me to care for his illegitimate child. I'm a single mom of two boys ages 11 and 10. Their father and I divorced five years ago after I learned he was cheating on me. He got her pregnant either right before he told me, and that was why he confessed, or right after. But our divorce was not an easy one. He wanted to stay friends, and I could not look at him after what he did. He and I were together for over 13 years. He was also a friend before he was my boyfriend or husband. And to have him betray me like that and treat me as he had was awful. He married his cheating partner. They had a daughter within months of our separation, followed by a son after our divorce and their marriage. Last year, they lost a baby, which led to the discovery that his wife had cancer. What followed was a lot of fighting between the two of us again. He wanted me to help him and his wife out. He said their children, who are currently five and three, needed family beyond just him and his wife. His own family disowned him for our divorce, as they were extremely religious, and she has no family. I told him it would be over my dead body that I would help him. He argued that it was for the children, and if not for his kids with her, then for our boys, who could see their family heal and be one. I told him he stopped any chance of that happening when he cheated on me. What I did not expect was for him to tell his daughter's school to call me when she got sick. He was at work at the time and couldn't leave apparently because he had already missed a lot of work due to his wife, and she was home recovering from chemo. I got the call and was asked if I would pick her up. I said no. Several hours later, I got reamed by him on the phone for leaving his sick child at school when I knew they had nobody. This is when he told me how he couldn't leave and how his wife was resting. I told him the babysitter for his son should have been called over me. He told me the son was in daycare, and I should be effing ashamed because she was a sick child who's going through a lot and I could have helped. He told me he hoped our sons were going to be effing ashamed of me. They aren't, and I argued back with him over the phone at the time, but I guess part of me does feel bad for the child. My sons also sensed an atmosphere while they were with their dad after the incident, when he and his wife talked about me, and I hate that for my sons. Am I the jerk? This OP is not the jerk, but there are a lot of nuances here that most of Reddit isn't picking up on. People on one sub strongly feel that OP doesn't owe that child anything, which is true. They also fear that helping the child would have enabled the father to keep using her for favors. Granted, that same sub has also said some pretty disgusting things about affair babies in general, so they aren't the best to ask when it comes to moral questions, which is a shame since that's literally what the sub is for. 
However, another sub where this story was cross-posted bends really far to the other extreme, suggesting OP is a terrible person for not helping the kid. That doesn't seem right either. How was the father even certain that his ex would be any more available than he was on the day his daughter happened to get sick? She has no relationship with the kid. She didn't know the girl was sick, nor did she even know she was an emergency contact. If you want to help, that's not the way to go about it. If my ex asked me for a favor where an innocent and more or less unrelated party was the one at risk of suffering, I might do it if asked directly. But trying to spring it on someone unannounced is low and manipulative. Do I think it would have hurt her to help the child this once and tell the school never to use her as an emergency contact again, then maintain that boundary in the future? No, not at all. But the few people who suggested that middle-of-the-road solution were downvoted to oblivion and told the birth mother should get off her chemo-ridden backside and do it herself. So what do you think? Is OP the jerk? And even if not, should she have considered handling things differently? Also, do other factors, like the effects on the ex-husband's childcare finances after chemo, have any bearing on the answer? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you made it this far in the video, consider liking and subscribing for more videos coming. My brother won't shut up about me slurping my husband's flesh baton. So I'm kind of ticked off. For context, I'm 28 and my brother is 24. He's the picture of toxic masculinity. He's told me before that instead of flushing when he drops a grumpkin, he will just add to the pile to see how much the toilet can handle. He has also used my razor to shave his backside when we were teenagers, then vehemently denied it because that was gay. He told me that his head is for knowledge, and he uses his body for one purpose, to bang women. He likes to be the center of attention and say stupid things to bother people in order to entertain himself. Therefore, I only visit him when I see my parents for holidays. My parents wanted to throw me a gender reveal party for my newest pregnancy, which is a boy, and my brother was in town for his friend's bachelor party. I didn't know he was in town, and I didn't know he was staying at my parents' house at the same time as me until he opened the door to the bedroom I was staying in without knocking, thinking that would be the one he would be staying in. So he saw me slurping off my husband. What a horror show. He told me that I should have locked the door, and that I shouldn't slurp my husband because ingesting his seed will make my son gay. I tried to ignore it until my brother brought his drunken friends to my parents' house as I was packing to leave the next day. He introduced me as the mouth bandit. His friends didn't even know what that meant, but in a fit of rage, I brought up the one thing I knew would make him shut up. In high school, he lost a bet and had to put a glass adult toy in his mouth. So I said, those who suck glass Johnsons shouldn't throw stones, and this sent him off. He yelled at me and walked away, his friends laughing behind him. I know I should have taken the high road, but I feel like he had this one coming. What do you all think? Am I the jerk? I don't think you're the jerk, but I think it's weird you don't lock the door when you're getting intimate in your parents' house. Even if you thought nobody was home, it just seems wise. Sometimes people forget things and have to come home earlier than you expect, so they could have walked in just as easily as your brother did. And if you're really gobbling this man's cornbread so loudly that you can't hear the front door open, you want to have your bases covered. That doesn't change the fact that the brother sounds awful. And if you're going to make fun of someone you've known for your entire life, you better expect them to have a few embarrassing comebacks lined up and ready to go. Not only is the brother a jerk, but he's kind of an idiot for expecting that conversation to go any better than it did. But still... Keep the doors locked, kids, or at least throw a sock up on the doorknob. Whenever you most want people to knock first is usually exactly when they won't. Trust me. My daughter refuses to do homework the way we did in the 90s. I have three children, Vivian, who's 17, and Annabelle and Lucas, both 8. My wife and I have a rule that from 7 p.m. to 8 a.m. on weekdays, and from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. plus 7 p.m. to 8 a.m. on weekends, the Wi-Fi goes off, because we don't want them staring at screens all day. Sophie and I had fun with our imaginations as kids, and ours can do the same. School started the last week of August for Vivian, and she has become extremely combative with the no Wi-Fi rule. She keeps pushing her limits about using the Wi-Fi during the off hours because she always claims to have homework. I've had to take away her phone because we've caught Vivian using some kind of phone app that gives her computer Wi-Fi. She's constantly angry and claiming she needs it for homework. I am highly doubtful that she has so much homework so often. When I was in high school, we didn't even get homework until October. 
I was able to finish my homework in 20 minutes, and I certainly didn't need all weekend to do it. Vivian needs to learn how to get it done faster. She's taking too long, and she needs to start hurrying up with her homework now, because in college, she will receive far more work and have much less time to complete it. Vivian got very angry on Friday, because she said she needed the Wi-Fi again, and there was an assignment due that night. She got angry at us because we shut the Wi-Fi off at the usual time, and she said that she had to rush the assignment and likely got a bad grade for it. She's also complaining that she needed the computer to study and will fail otherwise. I admit I was very firm with Vivian. I sat her down and I told her that she needs to grow up and stop with the excuses and the disrespect. It's unfair to Annabelle and Lucas if she gets an exception from the Wi-Fi rule. If she actually has homework, she needs to pick up the pace. I could do those high school assignments in 20 minutes, and she needs to be self-accountable for not hurrying up with work. She also doesn't need a laptop to study, and her trying to tell me otherwise is ridiculous. Vivian started crying and didn't seem to understand my message at all. My wife claims it's teenage hormones, but it's incredibly frustrating because Vivian cries and shuts down whenever I try to talk to her about something she doesn't want to hear. Several family members, including my wife, are saying I should let Vivian have the extra Wi-Fi because high school is getting harder, and they think all teenagers need the internet for help. But again, I've listed the reasons above why doing that would be wrong. Still, I'm asking on here if I should just do it for my wife and family. Hmm, this is a unique approach to the back-in-my-day story. Usually those stories are about how hard things used to be. But this OP wants us to believe things were a piece of cake. Having been in school both before and after home internet, I can tell you that it's kind of stupid for either generation to play these comparison games. A lot of commenters are trying to say there's more homework now. Well, my day wasn't long after OPs, and I can tell you that he's exaggerating how little there used to be in the first place. What most comments are missing is that the amount of homework doesn't even matter. The more important fact is that the homework itself is different, and a lot more of it has to be done and sometimes even submitted online. Also, Vivian is 17. Does OP not want her to attend college? Because I'm pretty sure she's at the age to start getting ready for it. And admissions are another process that looks a lot different than it used to. If she's expected to maintain her grades and get into a good school, she needs to spend significantly more time online. I won't blame OP for not liking that, and with certain workarounds, you actually can limit your screen time and still get ahead in life. But it's harder to do than ever, and I don't hear OP doing anything to help his daughter figure it out likely because he doesn't understand the current system well enough to do that. And besides, Vivian isn't working with the system her dad wants. She's working with the only system she's been given. That's not going to change, no matter how much OP, or even Vivian for that matter, thinks less internet would be better. What do you think? Is there a way to compromise in this situation, or does OP simply need to stop being a jerk and let his daughter run the show? Let us know in the comments how you'd handle this if you were the father or daughter in this situation. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.